going on, Jerome? Beautiful Wednesday. Birds are chirping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. Now, yes, uh, ma hell, maybe we should resurrect the most accurate power rankings in the known universe because we're already seeing the haters and the losers put out an uh, inaccurate power ranking. So, uh, FanDuel. Great. Uh, so they put out uh, their way too early NFC power rankings, and they got the Vikings 12th out of 16. <laughs> I mean, the Vikings are only ahead of the Commies, the Panthers, the Cardinals, and, and the Giants. And after the Commies probably take a quarterback at two, I'm sure that they'll shoot up. Mm. But the Vikings are behind the Saints, who are running it back with Derek Carr because it would cost them more money to cut him. Mm. Uh, I feel like the Rams are low. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Aaron Donald is gone, but... You're not going to bet against Sean McVay. The Bucks, whatever. The Seahawks, whatever. The Falcons. <laughs> All right, uh, again, th this is part and parcel of the media. Soon as Kirk Cousins leave, or sorry, Kurt Cousins. That really pisses people off. Do not care at all. Uh, but Kurt Cousins, uh, the second that he goes from the Vikings to the Falcons, all of a sudden, oh, oh, here he is, a top seven-ish quarterback, the savior. Oh, the second coming. The greatest thing since sliced bread. Nonsense. How are the Bears at five? <laughs> That's what I was saying. I mean, the Bears, I mean, sure, uh, on paper, on purpose, uh, is Ryan Poles building up a team? Maybe. Uh, they're banking on the remnants of Keenan Allen. That's a big move. DJ Moore straight up said he doesn't work out. His body's going to fall apart by 30. Uh, and, okay, Caleb Williams. I'm sure that he won't be a head case. I'm sure that he won't be a bust. B-U-S-T. Uh, Eagles at four. They watched the Eagles last year. Okay. Uh, Packers, whatever. Lions, whatever. And San Francisco 49ers. Now, the Niners were originally at seven before they signed Josh Dobbs. <laughs> I love it. It's okay. Hey, if they hate, then let them hate uh, and watch the money pile up. There you go. Uh, speaking of money, uh, well... Speaking of money and hopefully not talking about pileups. So uh, Jordan Addison posted on the gram. Uh, well, it looks to be. So I'm not a car guy. Like, I, I know it's a Lamborghini, but I, I know that, uh, you know, car people will be like, oh, that's a Lamborghini uh, Di Diaste 762 uh, Road Humper. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, again, Addison looks like, like he's back out in Cali. Uh, don't know if that's his car or if he's just taking a, a picture of a car and appreciating it. Who, who knows, man? But, of course, we know. Uh, yeah. I, I wonder if Addison has his license back kind of funny man but again it's for the dog i, I understand fully fully understand uh something i also understand is that the vikings are looking up to uh, looking to add more dudes who can get their own pass rush and uh jordan schultz uh doing great work over at bleacher report a free agent linebacker jihad ward is visiting the vikings south uh, tells a bleacher report uh, Ward comes off a career a uh, best five sacks last season uh for the giants now initially i thought the vikings didn't have any chance getting jihad ward because that was a sean mcdermott type of guy Brandon Bean obviously is asleep. Who knew? Uh, but Jihad, so Ward's had an interesting career arc. So he's 29. He's been around the block. Uh, he's 6'5", 285. He was a 2016 second-round pick out of Northern Illinois by the Raiders. Now, he's number 44 overall. Like, that's not a low second-round pick. So he was seen as a guy who can generate his own rush, uh, did great work in college for the Huskies, but man, this hasn't really panned out. And he's bounced around. Uh, I think the problem is that he's a, a bit of a tweener where, yeah, he's 6'5", 285, doesn't quite have the speed or the bend around the edge that you would want, but uh, could Flores find a role for him? I mean, he, he certainly have a bit of a uh, blossom year last year with five sacks, but, I mean, this would be his sixth team uh, during his career. Uh, so, you know, t TBD. Also, it's weird. How come th they're reporting visits on, like, second and third wave free agents? Because they, I mean, it, they, they reported like it was, they threw it down like it was a draw for a while when Jonah Williams was vi visiting two days ago. I don't get it. I don't get it, man. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if the Vikings uh, want to bring Ward uh, into the mix. Uh, someone is also in the mix. <laughs> So, uh, Vikes fan page put this together. Uh, the Vikings will meet with Illinois State quarterback Zach Onyxstad, uh next month. Uh, Darren Duke Wolfson uh, mentioned on Scorenar. So, Illinois State, by the way, good day, uh, is the alma mater of Mike Zimmer, where he played linebacker and uh, quarterback. Just such a perfect Zimmer combination. Also, it's the alma mater of uh, James Robinson, who was hot for like one second, then you go. It's so weird with running backs, isn't it? Where they can come in, they can be a day three pick or undrafted. They have a thousand yard season out of nowhere, and then they just leave. It was like, 
James Robinson bounced around the league or uh, whatever happened to Philip Lindsay. Phil Lindsay's probably like 23 years old. Who knows, man? Uh, I So Onyx Dodd, uh, if you're a Gophers fan or at least know about the Gophers, so you remember that Onyx Dodd was the starting quarterback <laughs> before Tanner Morgan took over for a decade. But, uh, yeah, is that Onyx Dodd? I mean, he's got NFL size, 6'3", 220. He's from Northland, Minnesota, which sounds like the the most Minnesota town ever. Like, Northland, Minnesota? Come on. Uh, start, uh, like we said, started for the Gophers 2018 with no great shakes. Uh, 2023 with the Redbirds, I think. They might be the Cardinals. Who knows? Who cares? Uh, 69.7% completion percent. Nice. Uh, 21-11 uh, passing at 17 touchdowns, five picks. I don't know. I don't know, man. But also, don't don't forget that the Vikings had Tanner Morgan on the practice squad as like their quarterback four when they're going through all the injuries. So, I don't know. Maybe that's the gong show. Maybe that's what they do. It's like when Leidner was in camp. You guys remember that? Mitch Leidner uh, playing on the, the Pride of Lakeville North. Or Lakeville South. Oh, it doesn't matter. Lakeville. Uh, but remember, he he was trying to make the team as like the uh, third quarterback. Came down to the last preseason game. It was good times. Uh, I think that competition was against like Heineke and Keenum. I might be wrong. Uh, but with Annex debt, uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, let's speak of other draft picks. So this is the guy that I want and the guy that I've had a major crush on in the mock drafts. We're always trying to snag him in the mid-rounds, but uh, Christian Boyd of Northern Iowa. Go Panthers. Uh, somewhere, Kurt Warner is smiling. Uh, Purple of Persuasion. Measuring at 6'2", 329. Actually, I think he's slimmed down a little bit since uh, the Shrine Bowl. Uh, destroyed the bench press with 38 reps at his UNI Pro Day. That's four more than anyone at his position did at the Combine and one off the Combine record. Boyd has a scheduled visit with the Vikings. Now, Boyd was one of the notable Combine snubs. It just didn't make any sense at all. Uh, but Christian Boyd, Christian Boyd's a dog, man. And uh, already looks good in purple and gold. Uh, and he is one of the more modern nose tackles where, yeah, he, he can uh, two-gap and stop stop the run, but also he can definitely generate his own pass rush as well. Uh, 90 PFF grade in 2023, 40 pressures, three sacks, 24 stuffs. He's he, he's one of my put-it-on-the-table uh, like draft crushes. And, it, and just think about like player and body types. Like Flores – with the Patriots as well as with the Dolphins. Like he, uh, he didn't have a personnel say over the Patriots, but he's always sort of uh, employed like leaner nose tackles. You look at Roquan Davis with the Dolphins. Uh, you look at what everything went on with the Patriots. Uh, he wasn't there during the Will Fork years per se, uh, but actually he was, but he wasn't uh, the de facto D coordinator when Will Fork was there. He's already with the Texans, but uh, with uh, Christian Boy, I mean, he, he he can be a three down nose tackle, and he he's a guy that I, I like a lot. Also, he's got heavy hands. Obviously, has has that strength. Even though bench is not a you know complete measurable of strength, but I uh, can certainly get things going. And he was a problem at the Shrine Bowl, a- absolutely was. So I, I I would love to see him in purple. Love uh, keep keep that name in mind, Christian Boyd. Uh, now a lot of projections have him in the mid rounds. I wouldn't be shocked at all if he sneaks into the back end of day two. Hmm. Uh, speaking of draft, so we went over Daniel Jeremiah's DJ's mock draft. Uh, no, so DJ's Daniel Jeremiah. It's not like Steve Aoki doing up a mock draft. Although I would watch that or read that rather, or Avicii doing up a seven rounder. Go ahead. Uh, but Paul Oakenfold. Yeah. Uh, but the Vikings do trade up with the Cardinals in DJ's mock. Uh, the, they get up to four for J.J. McCarthy. And then uh, the 33rd team uh, did up a mock draft where the Vikings trade up to five uh, with the Chargers uh, and also secure J.J. McCarthy. And then PFF also did a mock draft where they traded up to four with the Cardinals for uh, for J.J. McCarthy. Now, does this kind of feel like a, a little bit of groupthink, a little bit of echo chamber? Sure. But you do have that uh, with the draft, especially since we got – five six freaking weeks uh, all the way there and it's almost like guys remember a couple years ago when uh, every single mock draft it was uh yetter gross meadows uh, from penn state to the vikings or it was uh, aj epinesa from the hawkeyes uh, to the vikings every single mock draft and you're just like I, like i half think that both those dudes are still on the team because they're a mock draft so much but i i know that a lot of people mentioned is like hey is jj mccarthy this year's Will Levis, where I mean, a lot of people thought that there's going to be quarterbacks, four quarterbacks in the top ten, you know, with Stroud and Young and Richardson and Levis. But I mean, Le- Levis fell like a stone. But no, I I feel like there's enough insight into the thinking of the teams 
that I I do believe that the steam with McCarthy and the Giants is real. I do believe that the steam with McCarthy and the Vikings and the Broncos is real. Maybe even the Raiders to a degree too. So I I think that it's not a Will Levis situation where you know, people were split on opinions and teams just went in different directions. Uh, you know the Titans they could have drafted Levis at eight last year, but instead they took Pete Skaronski from uh, Northwestern and then they circled around second round and then they got Levis. So. I know I I don't think that this is gonna be a Will Levis situation with McCarthy, but I mean if the Vikings want him, they go get. Oh, also uh, Mel Kiper Jr. had had the Vikings taking McCarthy at eleven, which I I would be willing to bet a significant amount of jelly beans that McCarthy doesn't get out of the top ten. I don't think he gets out of the top six. So there you go. Uh, yeah. uh, so Jerry Judy, for whatever. I mean I like Jerry Judy at Alabama, uh, but it was clear that. He wasn't a good fit in Denver. He's been on the trade block for forever, but he got traded to the to the Browns and ideas me up. So uh J uh Jerry Judy, not not I know that he's JJ, but there's only one JJ. Uh signed a three year extension for fifty eight million with forty one million guaranteed. So to the people who are gonna be pissed off when Justin Jefferson rightfully gets 35 36 37 million per year look at this contract i mean jerry judy is a perfectly fine wide receiver three he's never had a thousand yard season in his career he doesn't necessarily make his quarterbacks better he's he's fine like he's a fine receiver but 19 million a year and also 41 million guaranteed on a three-year deal get out of here now, this could, of course, be Browns tax because the Browns are noted to just throw stupid money around, which I don't understand because, you know, Quasey's mentor uh, and former boss, Andrew Barry, seems like a, a pretty smart dude, but they did the, the they did the Watson trade and the Watson contract, and now they did this trade and this contract. I don't know, man. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, speaking of a wide receiver who's worth the trade and contract, so Brandon Hayek who is a guy that I, I've loved a lot, man, uh, back at Arizona State. Uh, he was catching piss missiles from Jaden Daniels uh, back, back when Daniels is in Tempe. Scotts, I, I don't know where Arizona State is in the great state of Arizona. Anyways, but uh, Brandon Ayak, who does not tweet, but of course he's trying to nudge something, get something done with the Niners. Uh, so he tweeted out, uh, at Mike Tomlin, uh, they're, they, they're saying, we twins, what you think? So a lot has been made that Brandon Ayak is, does kind of look like Mike Tomlin. Like, is this a uh, a situation like the movie Looper, where Joseph Gordon-Levitt played uh, the younger version of Bruce Willis? Could be, C- certainly could be. <laughs> and of course, er- everyone had jokes, but my favorite one was uh, Omar Epps' reaction to having to play both Mike Tomlin and Brendan Hayek in a Steelers movie, because <laughs> a lot has been made about um, uh, about uh, Omar Epps uh, look look like Tomlin throughout the years. Which, if there ever is a Tomlin biopic, I mean, Mike Epps. I mean, he's age appropriate. He's looked good. Plus, he's done football movies before. He was the running back in the program. It's great. It's great, man. Uh, but that's it. Uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, it, it is a beautiful Wednesday dump. You guys know what to do. Skull production value.